Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here at T-Roy Cooks. We really appreciate it. We're cooking the perfect prime rib roast for you. And this prime rib is a 10 pound USDA prime dry aged rib roast from Lobel's of New York. Y'all go check them out, lobels.com. And I'm um, gonna show you how we're gonna throw this together. Again, it's gonna be the perfect prime rib roast. Y'all stick around. I just wanna show you what we're working with. This is a five bone, approximately 10 pound. Check out that nice marbling, USDA Prime, and also dry aged. You can see it's dry aged by the way the outer skin looks. This is gorgeous, folks. And again, they, uh, the butchers at Lobel's, they trimmed the rib off and retied it because it's best to cook with the rib meat, with the ribs on there if you can. It gives a lot better flavor. So, let me show you what we're going to do with this. I've got, let me back you out here. I've got the mirepoix here. You can use just a plain rack and sit the rib roast on the rack in your uh, roasting pan or you can sit it on a bed of uh, carrots, onions, celery and that's what I've done here and I've put some garlic in there as well so we're going to transfer this rib roast right over here and you want to put it fat side up you want to add in uh, about a half, half inch to a third inch of liquid I'm going to use some beef broth and a little bit of red wine but you can also use just beef broth or throw some water in there if you'd like Just like so, put a little red wine in there. Uh, Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon would work. It's gonna give it a really nice flavor. Oh yeah, really, really nice. When this is roasting, you don't wanna let this pan run dry. So if you need to add more liquid during the roasting process, that's what you need to do. All right, let me show you the next step. I get you a nice uh, saucepan, put it over a nice uh, medium to medium high heat. Got this nice extra virgin olive oil. Use the best olive oil you can find. You want to put about a quarter of a cup in there. And this is what we're going to baste onto the rib roast. That's probably good. Got four cloves of garlic here. I'm just going to bruise them real quick. There we go. I'm going to toss these into that oil and we're just going to saute these a little bit until they start to turn a little bit of golden brown. That's going to help infuse that oil with a nice garlic flavor. All right, man, this is really smelling good. It's been a few minutes now. You can start to see some brown on the garlic. That's what we're looking for. At this point, you want to add a little bit of salt, some fresh cracked black pepper. Turn the heat off. And this is where we're going to brush on that roast. All right, take that olive oil you just made, spoon this, or not spoon it, but I guess you could spoon it. Brush it all over the outside of this roast. And we're going to let this roast sit out and come up to room temperature, which, it, you know, for depending on the size roast you have, it's going to be two to four hours. And this is a nice 10 pound one, so I'm going to let this go for probably about three and a half, four hours. All right, everybody, it's been three and a half hours. Let me show you what we're going to work with here now. My oven is uh, preheated to 450. I'm going on with some salt. This is a big hunk of meat, so go ahead and salt it up really good. Fresh cracked black pepper. And I've got this Bittersweet Farms. This is a zesty, garlicky type sauce. It's kind of like a, I mean, not sauce, herbs mixture blend. It's kind of like uh, Herbs de Provence, I believe, but it's, it's got a lot of garlic, as you can see. And this is also available at lowbells.com if you want some. Hey, everybody, my oven's, again, 450 Fahrenheit. I just popped that roast in there. We're going to let it go about 10 minutes uncovered, and then I'm going to turn the oven down to 350 Fahrenheit, and we're going to let it finish cooking. Now, generally, you need to let it cook for about 12 to 13 minutes per pound. This is a 10 pound roast, so we're looking at about 120 minutes to get to a nice rare temp, which that's about 130 Fahrenheit internal temp. But you wanna pull it about five degrees before it reaches that final internal temp that you're wanting. So I'm gonna pull this one about 125 Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna tent it, let it rest for about a good 20, 30 minutes. And it should come out nice. Y'all stick around. All right, everybody, I pulled this roast out. It hit 125 internal temp, and it took right at two hours, which we were expecting. So I'm gonna take it out of this. I'm gonna put this over on this cutting board. We're just gonna tint this with some foil. We're gonna let this rest, 
And all of this pan dripping, we're gonna make some nice au jus out of this. As you can see here, I've pulled out all my veggies here, the mirepoix. And the reason I use the mirepoix instead of just using a plain rack, I, I like to have a little flavor in my au jus. So carrots, onions, celery, that's good stuff. It's gonna help really flavor this au jus. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna strain this a little bit and try to separate the oil. So I'm gonna pour this, these pan drippings into this, uh, this separator. It separates the fat from the rest of it. And give us a couple of minutes. Let all those pan drippings separate. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, just bring it back up to speed. This uh, fat separator here, I've, I'm left with the fat in here, and I poured off the actual uh, pan drippings without the fat. So what I'm going to do is take, uh, I don't know, a couple, two or three tablespoons of this fat, about like that. I'm going to warm this up. I've got this over a nice uh, medium-high medium high flame. Let this get kind of warm. All right, and this is coming up to a little boil. We're going to throw in a little bit of flour. Don't need a whole lot, maybe uh, you know, a teaspoon and a half or so, or a couple teaspoons. That should be good. What you want to do is mix this flour with that fat and just let it cook for two or three minutes. Kind of get that flour taste out, and then we're going to add those pan drippings. All right, everybody, it's been a couple of minutes or so. Let's go ahead and start adding in a little bit of these pan drippings here. And you want your au jus to be kind of thin. That's the reason I didn't put a whole lot of uh, roux in here, or didn't make a large roux anyway. Just incorporate all this. Get a whiskey if you need to. And I will bring you back here in a little bit. Uh, it's going to probably take about 10 minutes. And I'm going to slowly add more of these pan drippings as I need to. All right, you can see my au jus is just starting to come up to a little boil. When it does that, go ahead and turn the heat off and taste it. If it needs more salt and pepper or anything else, go ahead and add it at that point. Just let it cool off a little bit and you're ready to serve it with your rib roast. Here's your rib roast. It's rested for about a half hour. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Again, because this is a boned and tied rib roast, we need to cut the string off here. So just do this real quick. There we are. Now what you're left with is the bones that sh should come free off of this roast. Just like that. There we go. All right, and they need a little bit of help, I think. Oh yeah. Come on, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Now you can take these, these ribs, put them back in the oven, let them finish cooking and get tender. That's fabulous right there. Beef ribs, that's good stuff. So, sit these off to the side, flip this roast back over, pull all the string off. Let's see if we can cut some of this for you, just to see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. You can cut these as thick or as thin as you'd like. It smells perfect. It smells absolutely fantastic, folks. Mark. Goodness, I wish I were here. This is awesome. Oh yeah, perfect prime rib, folks. Now check that out. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely amazing. Perfectly cooked. There you go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We're gonna play some of this up. We're gonna give it a taste. This is our final plate, folks. Y'all check it out. This gorgeous prime rib roast. Took a slice of it and got some au jus, homemade, right over the top of it. We've got a nice horseradish sauce I made. And also, Karen made some of these fingerling potatoes and some of the green beans. And we used that butter infused, or garlic infused butter uh, for, the, for the veggies here. This is gorgeous. I just must have to say, this is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and take me a little bit with this rib cap. This is my favorite part right here. I'm gonna take some of this and we're just fixing to taste this. 
Oh yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's give this prime rib roast a try. I put a little bit of that horseradish sauce on here and it's got that au jus on top of it and it smells fantastic. I wish I could smell this, oh my gosh. Mm. USDA prime dry aged. It doesn't get any better than that. Mm. That is fabulous, folks. So tender, so juicy. Hope y'all go to lowbells.com, give it a try. And uh, folks, if y'all like this, y'all give me a thumbs up. And I hope you share this video. And when you do, please tell all of your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time, everybody.